Now in his fourth season as an AFL player, GWS giant Tom Green is emerging as one of the game's premier inside midfielders. Oh, one hand in the middle if you don't mind. In this special extra edition of Access All Areas, brought to you by Crypto.com, Green discusses his lofty goals, leadership aspirations, and the unique challenge he faces every time he steps out onto the field. Well, here's Green again off one step. Oh, Tom right. Green! Oh, yes! Tom, thank you for your time today on AFL.com.au. Thank you for having me, Damon. I'm excited. Fourth season in, it seems from the outside looking in that it is starting to come together very, very nicely for you. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, It's been a really nice journey so far and I've loved every minute of it. We are, as you know, every sort of young player talks about with the ups and the downs of your early career. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I've really enjoyed it so far and I'm really looking forward to seeing where you know it can potentially go. Green should finish, does finish. You've never been shy at times talking up your own abilities and, and, and more so your aspirations to be the best. It's it's pretty bold, isn't it, to, to put it out there the way you you have and you, and you want to. Yeah, I, I think it, it is a little bit bold, um, but I think I, I think I actually I saw an article about Will Day talking about his similar aspirations that he hasn't been shy about saying, you know, if you shoot really high and you, maybe you don't quite get there, but it still puts you in a pretty good area. And it's something that I think, a mentality that I sort of relate to, I think that, uh, you know, I'd love to be the best and I strive to be the best and that is my goal. Struck that to perfection. I don't really follow the NBA, but Jason Tatum post-match um, was saying that he's the he's one of the elite players in the world. I mean, but they, they embrace that style, don't they? Is that more yeah. important with you? Yeah. It is a little bit. I'm a big NBA fan, and so I see a lot of those NBA guys speak like that, but they have to have that ultimate self-belief, particularly because, you know, for instance, NBA, one guy has so much an influence on the game that they need to believe that they are... Um, you know, I suppose the best player in the world, as Jason Tatum does, and he's not far off it either. So I think it is part of that mentality that you see a little bit and something that I think can be, you know, helpful and beneficial in AFL as well. For what it's worth, I just find it refreshing that someone talks the way they may think. There's not a lot of that type of footballer in the system today, is there? There's not, and I think, though, it is something maybe we're starting to see a little bit more of now. Shows, goes, uses. Daring. <laughs> so clean, so clean. The lesson, or whatever it was, that came out of being omitted late last year, where did that fit into to where you're at? Yeah, I mean, it was tough. It was probably from the start. It was a tough year for the club last year, and it was a, a year of a little bit of turmoil that we probably haven't seen really uh, as a club yet uh, in, our, in our, I suppose, our short journey. But from a personal standpoint, it was, you know, really disappointing. And Mark McVeigh and I had some pretty open and frank discussions. I think it was something that after that, it's, it's sort of motivated me throughout the summer to really get better and I suppose to never feel it again. Contested ball is obviously um, one of your very strong suits. Uh, is it in your eyes the best? And as you answer it, uh, your teammate Phil Davis just before said that uh, outside of Paddy Dangerfield, you're the best he's seen as a teammate in that space. It's, uh, it's a very nice compliment from Phil. Good Green, really good hands to Ward. You know, those people who can win contested footy become really, really important. We look at Patrick Dangerfield and Marcus Bondapelli, guys who play well in big games are guys who are great at the contest. I feel like my reception to, with most players is generally positive in that way, particularly some of the guys that I really idolise, like Patrick Cripps, Mark Spons and Pelly, you know, Josh Kennedy used to play for Sydney. You know, those sort of warriors, those inside guys, I think they've uh, been really good to me. I, I feel that there is a level of respect there, which I think is something that I'm continuing to try and earn in this game. And Tom, you don't mind talking about this. I mean, you, you've spoken about it off here and you said, raise it. Um, left ear. Yeah. Totally deaf. Yeah, completely deaf in my left ear. It's um, something that I sort of sort of realised when I was 12. We uh, went through a bunch of tests and sort of figured out what it was, and I think it's this virus which at the time wasn't, I don't think it's that really well studied, called sudden hearing loss syndrome, and it wipes out the hairs in your cochlear, literally. You obviously learnt to live with it. Do you, do you, do you know how much it does set you back in, in what you're trying to do out there some days? I don't notice it that much, but as I said, I think it's because I've become used to dealing with it. I mean, we have to set up the interview in a certain way so I can hear you a little bit better. You said that. And there's certain yeah. things like that. Um, and I sort of notice myself, I'll walk on the left-hand side of a group so that I can hear everybody and that sort of thing when we're see seated as well, or sit in certain areas so I can hear. So it changes little things like that, but I don't notice it too much. But some of my teammates might say they notice it when they're calling for me off the bench and I'm uh, just running past. And <laughs> what do you say, you want a ground ball? Yeah, right. You're next out of contract at the exact time as we talk for Tasmania to come into the system. <laughs> you timed that pretty well. 
Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's a coincidence. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, it has been. It's funny that it's gone like that, but um, it's really exciting to have a 19th club and then hopefully, you know, maybe a 20th one coming as and well. And you might be the best player in the comp by then, and you might <laughs> have a big figure attached to your... Uh... <laughs> there's, there's a lot of footy to be played out between now and then, so we'll wait and see. Peedling, lovely. Uh, leadership part of the CV now, um, being an official leader of this club. Um, captain's here at one stage soon, hopefully, for you. I'd love to. I would love to. And I, that's another, I suppose, aspiration that I've sort of been pretty open with is that I really enjoy being a leader and it's an aspiration that I do have. Having said that, if my teammates don't want to see me as their captain, I don't want to captain them. And I think that's a really important part of captaincy, though, is I don't want it to be, you know, a, a token thing. It's something that I think is really important. And if my teammates see me as the right person that they'd like to, you know, captain them, then I'd absolutely love to do it at some point. Lovely, <laughs> Briga. Yeah, okay. Thanks for joining us today on AFL.com.au. Thank you very much for having me, Damien. I loved it.